Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. Ukraine again accusing Russia of war crimes after new atrocious images emerge from war-torn cities. How the U.S. is responding, coming up. And outside with live cam, lots of low clouds out there, very mild, mid-60s. Will we see a shower or storm today? Mike is standing by with your forecast. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, April 4th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. I know it was nice and sunny out there. It was a beautiful weekend. Let's see if the weather changes at all today. We could use any rain. We just obviously don't want any strong to severe thunderstorms. Well, there is that outside chance for that. Now, okay. one or two of them, the odds are not that great. Uh, the odds are not that great for rain, but take an umbrella just to be on the safe side. And this morning, did you guys see mist coming into work? No, sir. I didn't. I didn't just, yeah, just, okay. I mean, hardly even, I was like, is that mist on the windshield? So uh, that's about all that's out there as of right now. Lots of clouds and yeah, a whole different story than yesterday. These temperatures are very, very warm. Mid, upper 60s, couple of low 70s around here. The humidity has definitely made a return with these dew points well up into the 60s. You get above 60, that's when you start to feel it and it's going to be staying this way throughout the day. So it will be a very sultry day. Oh, is on the high side. Everything else is low. So this morning temperatures are going to be basically steady. A little bit of mist out there. Haven't seen any reports of any fog. We do have somewhat of a breeze and then it is going to be windier later on today. 82 for high temperature. Now a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms, about a 30% chance for some rain. So rain chances obviously are not that great. Big question is because the Texas Cavaliers River Parade is going on tonight. It is going to be a very warm evening. I'd take an umbrella just to be on the safe side. Most of the rain is going to be further up to the north, but there is that chance for a stray shower or even a thunderstorm. I think the odds are in favor that the uh, parade is gonna go off rain free. So just keep that in mind, but you can't completely rule it out. And there is that chance, just one or two of the isolated storms that pop up around the area could be on the strong to potentially severe side with high winds as well as hail. But the majority of that is gonna be further up to the north. I don't think odds are very good around here, but Again, it, it's just that very small outside chance. Rest of the week looks absolutely fantastic. Matter of fact, maybe even on the cool side, a couple of mornings. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Mike. Top stories this morning. Ukraine is accusing Russian forces of committing war crimes after leaving behind a scene from a horror film on the outskirts, outskirts rather, of Kyiv. Western leaders are condemning the atrocities seen there, calling for tougher sanctions against Moscow. The White House warning the invasion is far from over, despite claims by Russia that they're retreating from Kyiv and surrounding areas. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest this morning. Devastation across Ukraine as authorities accuse Russia of committing war crimes. In Bucha, a city northwest of the capital, Kyiv, bodies lying in the streets, some victims with their hands bound and others shot at close range. Local officials say it appears some were tortured. Bucha's mayor saying hundreds are buried in a mass grave. This satellite image showing a 45-foot-long trench near a church. This woman and her husband, she says, dragged from their apartment by Russian troops and then separated. Later, she found him dead. In the south, explosions in Ukraine's main port city of Odessa after Russian missiles hit an oil refinery and several fuel depots. In war-torn Mediopol, families forced to leave behind loved ones to try to flee the country. Ukrainian President Zelensky calling the killings a genocide. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken saying they're a punch in the gut, agreeing Russian forces have committed war crimes and that the U.S. is working to document them. We can't normalize this. Um, this is the reality of what's going on every single day as long as Russia's brutality against Ukraine continues. That's why it needs to come to an end. Blinken also saying he believes the war is entering a new phase as Russian troops move away from Kyiv, focus more on the south and east after suffering heavy losses in the north. Sunday night, Zelensky appealing directly to all Americans at the Grammy Awards. Tell the truth about the war on your social networks, on TV, support us in any way you can, any but not silence. As negotiations continue between the two countries, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken says the U.S. and its allies are open to lifting sanctions against Russia if it means a peace deal. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington.
And new details this morning about the deadly shooting in Dallas. One person is dead and at least 11 others hurt. The shooting happened at an Easter themed trail ride and concert with as many as 2000 people in attendance. Dallas police say a fight broke out and one person fired a gun into the air, followed by someone else firing into the crowd. One of those shots hit a 26 year old man in the head. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The other victims were taken to the hospital, including three juveniles. And in California, Sacramento's police chief says there were multiple shooters in the shooting that killed six people and injured 12. It was the second mass shooting in five weeks for California's capital city. Golden State Warriors coach Steve Kerr also reacting to that shooting, calling out politicians in California and Washington. If our government had any guts, if people put others in front of their own career paths, you know, in front of their own reelection campaigns, in front of their own propaganda to uh, manipulate people. It's right there in front of us. And we're going to have more on this story coming up in the next half hour. Airlines canceled more than 3,500 flights here in the U.S. over the weekend, delaying thousands more. Bad weather in Florida and other issues are being blamed. According to FlightAware.com, there were major disruptions at several major Florida airports, as well as in Baltimore, Maryland, and other airports around the country. Airlines like Southwest were heavily affected. They say operations are slowly returning to normal as we head into the work week. 436, about 67 degrees. And still the come, Tiger Woods has revealed he is practicing to play the Masters. Details ahead in your GMA first look. Plus, playoff hopes still alive for our San Antonio Spurs. Just ahead, highlights from their win against the Trailblazers. Yay, go Spurs, go. And a quick look at the Rosa Trans Sky, looking there at I-37 at Fair Avenue. Not too many people out. And also Highway 281 and Loop 410. Things look good right now. And outside with live cam waking up on a Monday morning right here on KSAT 12. Glad you're with us. We'll be right back. The Silver and Black went into last night's game, hoping to sweep the season series against the Portland Trail Blazers. But they'd be without DeJounte Murray and Jakob Pertl. Spurs and Blazers traded leads throughout the first half. Keldon Johnson already having a big night with 17 points by the half. Later in the game, Spurs would take off in the fourth and never look back. Final from the AT&T Center, San Antonio wins 113-92. With the win, the Spurs get the season sweep against Portland and build more distance between them and the Lakers. The Western Conference play-in brackets. Very good second half. You know, first half, uh, focus just wasn't there. And I thought that the Trailblazers, uh, they, they played hard, physical in the wind for all 48 minutes. And uh, luckily we woke up at halftime and came out in the second half and did a good job defensively, board-wise. You know, we had to roll with the punches and adjust and, and, and keep going. And I feel like, uh, you know, it was a little shaky at first, but, uh, you know, we found our stride at the right time and, you know, made it, made it work. They came out and they played well. They hit us in the mouth, mouth first and went into half with the lead. And, you know, we had to respond in the second half. And luckily, we, we came out and um, made a really good defensive half. And that was, the, that was the difference. Next up for the Silver and Black, they'll take on the Denver Nuggets on the road. Hopefully, the Spurs can keep some momentum going as the regular season starts to wind down. Spurs Nuggets set for 8 o'clock tomorrow night up in Denver. Yes, we hope it keep it going. It's been nice seeing a win like this. It's it would be nice. That's for sure. I'm glad they got these two this weekend. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Time now 441 and 67 degrees for now. And Fiesta is in full swing. Just ahead, a recap of some of the festivities over the weekend. In this morning's GMA first look, will he or won't he? Welcome back. Big it's been a little over a year since Tiger Woods' potentially career-ending car accident, but now signs that he could be readying for a comeback. We've seen him come back from so many different things over the years, but this would be remarkable if he could handle this. The tough thing is going to be, can he physically get around this golf course walking? I am so proud to present my dad, 
Tiger Woods into the World Golf Hall of Fame. Recently, his 14-year-old daughter, Sam Woods, inducting him into the Hall of Fame. You've defied the odds every time. Being the first black and Asian golfer to win a major. Being able to win your fifth Masters after multiple back surgeries. And being able to walk just a few months after your crash. And we'll have much more on this potential comeback coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Of course, Fiesta is in full swing, and for many, it is a family affair. As every parent knows, big events with your kids don't always go smoothly. Garrett Berenger got advice from parents about the best ways to ensure a successful and memorable Fiesta this year. At St. Gregory the Great, the sounds of Fiesta were in the air. Music, laughter, and parents calling for their kids. Lucas! Lucas! John and Elaine Hernandez came to Fiesta de la Familia with their four kids and other family. From now with big family, it's, it's easier to keep, a tra keep track of everybody. Everybody watches everybody. Fiesta with the family can be a lot of fun, but it can cost a lot too. 50, please. As you shell out for everything from funnel cake to rides, multiple times over. I'm counting off their inheritance. No. <laughs> but the Hernandez's say it's a price worth paying. When I rip them off, I'm just thinking that they're going to have a great time. You know, don't make a big deal about what you're spending. The important thing is that you're doing something as a family. They and other parents had advice for ensuring a fun family fiesta. You have to remember the stroller so you can put them in for a nap. Make sure you have enough to hydrate them. And keep the cooler in the car. The events to look for are ones that are going to keep your kids entertained and which aren't going to have too many rowdy adults. But that doesn't mean you can't have fun too. If your kid goes on a ride, what are you going to do? Not go with them? Ah! I mean, listen to those screams of terror. Ah! <laughs> which are totally a kid's. <laughs> That was Garrett Berger reporting. And we also have a Fiesta medal giveaway again. So keep watching GMSA this morning to find out where you could pick up your Fiesta 2022 medal. That is coming up later in the newscast. For right now, it's 446. Let's check the roads and see how things are looking out there right now. And we are looking great in I-37. I think that was at Military. Mm -hmm. There's 35 at AT&T Center Parkway. Yeah, things look good right now. They sure do. Boy, the blue bonnets are out in full force now, aren't they? It's beautiful. Yeah, I saw a ton, ton up near Austin yesterday, Mike Oster oh, Hage. I haven't seen any. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're definitely more numerous as you go further north, maybe where they've had a little bit more rain or it's been a yeah. little cooler. I've okay. seen more pictures on social media. Mm -hmm. We got a, a couple of pictures uh, this morning, but uh, this is a beautiful picture here. The waxing crescent moon, just a nice little sliver down there. Moon's going to be full on the, uh, the 16th, by the way. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. All right, past couple, of, I mean, the weekend couldn't have been nicer. It was just absolutely gorgeous. Actually starting Thursday night for Fiesta Fiesta and then all all the way through yesterday and now humidity is back clouds are back a little bit of mist out there the dew points the measure of moisture in the atmosphere have gone up about 15 20 degrees even 24 degrees out there in Uvalde so a lot more moisture around here as compared to this time yesterday morning and the humidity is going to be staying on the high side today so uh, just get ready for that if you are heading down to the parade yeah it is going to be humid with these dew points well up into the uh, 60s that's going to be the case overnight and it's going to get even higher as far as the humidity tomorrow it will be dropping off during the day. That's going to have a big impact on temperatures, though. Temperature is going to be soaring by tomorrow afternoon. Then we get much, much drier air that will eventually come in here after that, setting up for a fantastic rest of the week. This morning, um, you know, maybe a little bit of mist out here. I know there's a, a shower on there, but it's going to be just maybe a, some mist or something like that around here this morning. I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but the streets could be damp. Temperatures will stay steady throughout the next couple of hours. Then we're going to make it into the low 70s by late this morning. Again, one or two showers are possible, not very likely at all. 74 degrees at 11 o'clock, 76 at noon, and then uh, another couple of showers or so around here. We'll make it up to 82 for a high temperature today, a shower and or a thunderstorm. Now, as far as the computer models, and this is why talking about how rain chances are not that great, and a lot of computer models pretty much show this picture, which means, you know, a couple of little scattered uh, sprinkles here and there throughout the day, not 
much at all. There is that chance though, and even then going on into tonight, one or two of those showers are possible. Like I said, if you're going to the parade, the odds are in your favor that we're not going to be seeing rain. Most everything will be up to the north. Then we have probably the better chance of rain is going to be overnight into the early morning hours of tomorrow, and then we'll be clearing on out during the day. Now, if a storm does happen to pop up, there's a small chance just one or two isolated could be strong to potentially severe. But again, the majority of those are going to be further up to the north. So everything again is working in our favor that we won't see anything on the strong to severe side, but there is that risk. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Here's what's going on with the upper level steering winds and we, you know, had Fantastic weather over the weekend. This disturbance sliding on by here. Most of the energy is well up to the north of us. Then in behind that, we're going to get into this northwesterly flow aloft in the atmosphere. That is setting us up for a sensational rest of the week. We're going to have mornings that are coolish and then afternoons that are warm, but not very well, except for tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to skyrocket with temperatures up in the mid 90s, and we have somewhat of a front moving on through here to knock that down. Nice big flow of uh, cooler air coming in here for Friday morning. Since the parade on Friday is so early, it may actually be cool. When was the last time we said that for Battle of Flowers? Never. <laughs> so I don't six think degrees today. A shower is possible today. It is going to be breezy. Then a high temperature is going to make it up to 82 degrees. And again, a shower, a storm is possible, although not very likely going into the next couple of days. Tomorrow, temperatures skyrocket 94 degrees. We get that little bit of dry air, southwesterly wind and thermometers shoot up. Then somewhat of a front moves on through here. That's going to knock temperatures down into the 80s. Lows right around 50 or so, well below normal. And 40s starting off on Friday morning. Parade starts, what, 9 o'clock Friday, I believe? You guys are going to be down. Yes. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. Vanguard 845 ish. Yes, so and right, then parade right at before. nine. Mm -hmm. A light jacket is not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Again, so, Battle it, Flowers light jacket. Speaking of flowers, if you've been waiting to plant or buy flowers or for the front porch, batch, back porch, I think you're in the clear now as far yeah. as being okay temperature wise. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're done, done with, with the freezes. Anything cold like that. So, okay. All right. Good news. Good weather. Thank you, Mike. 451, about 66 degrees. And just ahead, a look at which new movie top the weekend box. Office. But first, your lottery numbers. Pick three, eight, four, four, Fireball three. Your daily four numbers, five, three, eight, three, Fireball three. Cash five, six, eight, 13, 16, 23. Lotto Texas three, six, 37, 46, 52, and 54. Your Powerball number, 6, 28, 47, 58, 59. Powerball 18, Power Play two. Good luck. that can only be described as superhuman. Despite some dismal reviews, Sony Pictures' Marvel adaption Morbius landed the top spot at the box office this weekend. The movie, starring Jared Leto as Morbius, the living vampire, earned an estimated $39 million in its opening weekend. The Channing Tatum Sandra Bullock rom-com The Lost City fell to the number two spot, bringing in another $14 million in its second weekend of release. And rounding out the top three, Warner Brothers The Batman, which brought in another $10 million domestically. Julia Quinn, the author of the Bridgerton series of novels, is crediting the Shonda Rhimes produced Netflix series with making her books bestsellers again. Bridgerton just popped the balloon and suddenly all sorts of people who've never picked up a romance novel or a historical romance novel were reading them. Season two of the hit series is already available to stream and fans of the period romance drama will be getting a third and fourth season. Saweetie, Chloe Bailey, and Jimmy Allen were among some of the musicians at the Black Music Collective's inaugural pre-Grammy ceremony held in Las Vegas on Saturday. Attendees at the event discussed the importance of recognizing black artists, including John Legend, who received the first ever Recording Academy Global Impact Award from the Black Music Collective. And happy birthday to Robert Downey Jr., the Iron Man star is turning 57. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Derek Dennis, ABC News. Time now, 456 and 66 degrees for now. Changes coming to Snapchat. Coming up, the videos you will soon be able to share. And a quick check of the roads with TransGuy. There's a look there to I-10 and ProBan. And I-10 at Camp Bullis. Things are looking good right now, but we'll be checking in soon with Stephen Cavasso. Roads look dry, too, don't they? Yes, they do. For the most part. Live from KSAT 12. 
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Waking up on a Monday morning with quite a few clouds, some humidity, and Mike says, yes, grab an umbrella just in case for today. Good morning, it's Monday, April 4th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a nice weekend. Uh, weather was pretty good with that sunshine, but looking forward to maybe a little cooler temperatures at the end of the week. That's right, Mike says it might be unusually cool for Battle of Flowers. Yeah. I mean, it's early this year and even earlier in the day as well. But yeah, in the morning, starting off, you may actually need a little bit of a sweatshirt or something like that. Not this morning, though, because, yes, it is much, much warmer and much more humid than what we had yesterday. 66 degrees, plenty of clouds. And then you look at that bottom number, dew points at 63. You get above 60, you start to feel it. And we do have somewhat of a breeze out there, so fog is really not that much of an issue. We're going to make it up to 82 later on today. And we keep all the clouds around here with a couple of showers. Now this morning I only saw it just specks of mist on the windshield, but there could be, you know, a little damp spot here or there on the road. No change in the aquifer on yesterday's reading and oak is on the high side. I don't know about you starting to see all that dust all over my car and mold, hackberry and grass are all low. As far as uh, the chance for anything strong too severe. Yes, even though the rain chances are very very, very low. One or two of those thunderstorms, there is the possibility that it could become severe with high winds being the biggest threat, maybe a little bit of uh, small hail. The majority of that, though, is going to be further up to the north. As a matter of fact, I think it, like Mark was talking about, you know, take an umbrella to be on the safe side. Yes, take it to be on the safe side, but I doubt if you really need it. Odds are in our favor that the uh, parade later on this evening is going to go off rain free, but there's still that chance for a couple of showers. Cloudy, humid, mist this morning, and then again, a shower. A couple of uh, thunderstorms are possible, although very few and far between, and that's the situation for tonight as well. A stray shower or a storm, the majority further up to the north. Then we'll have, I think, even a couple of more overnight, late, late tonight, and the first part of the day tomorrow. It's going to be really hot tomorrow in behind that. Temperatures are going to be skyrocketing into the mid 90s here in town. And then we get just perfect weather for the rest of Fiesta and a cool battle of flowers. Yeah, at the start of it, you might need a jacket, believe it or not. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority this Monday morning. Stephen Cavazos, morning, sir. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, well, if for anyone that's just waking up, our friends over at TransGuide are getting us a closer view at some road work that's actually happening right now. Uh, it's not labeled here from the TransGuide camera, but we can tell you that this is taking place right now at 1604 near Kyle Seal Parkway. Obviously, we are seeing those flashing lights and cones still placed out. So first, uh, excuse me, crews are still out there working to improve the condition. So just make sure that you drive carefully in any direction this morning. Right look at the map doesn't really show that there was a lot of issues to report this early in the morning, given that it is 502. However, we did have a crash that popped up here off I-35 southbound right there at AT&T Center Parkway. Talked to our friends over at Transguide earlier this morning. They do tell us that crash has cleared out and obviously no issues in those southbound lanes of 35 and no issues if you're traveling into San Antonio from any of these neighboring communities. Still pretty much green across the board. 25 minutes, so I-10 is going to to take you to get to downtown San Antonio in those eastbound lanes, southbound lanes of 281 coming in from Bulverde. We're looking at 28 minutes and 26 on I-35 traveling in from New Braunfels in those southbound lanes. One last look at Transguide, not the only road work that you need to be on the lookout for. We're going to have more details on what's happening in Bernie later this morning, coming up a little bit later on. Mark. Thanks, Stephen. Seems like a bad case of deja vu for San Antonio firefighters and people who live near an abandoned west side house. For the second time in recent weeks, that house has gone up in flames. It's on the West Travis Street near south, near Northwest 24th. Katrina Weber is also there with a live report. Do they have any idea how these fires keep starting, Katrina? Well, there's no official cause this morning, but the consensus among those neighbors and firefighters is that there have been homeless people going in and out of this house and possibly starting fires to either keep warm or to cook. There were no working utilities here, but nevertheless, there was a fire that broke out about 3 o'clock this morning. You can see the uh, drastic uh, damage that was done. Uh, firefighters tell us now that they were here just about a little bit more than a week ago. The same house went up in flames. The house had been boarded up since that time, but it appears that someone took the boards off the windows and doors and went inside again. A neighbor did tell me she has seen homeless people in and out of that house despite the boards. She says uh, that one side of the house had burned last time and they seem to be on the other side of the house more recently. But again, uh, the house did go up in flames. No official word on the cause. 
yet, but suspected that someone did start this fire, uh, possibly to keep warm or to cook. And firefighters tell me that they hope now the city might tear down this building uh, because it is a danger here this, here this morning. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Top of your morning headlines. Authorities over in Sacramento being tight-lipped about a weekend mass shooting in which six people died. The carnage sparking new calls for some kind of action on gun violence. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimber with more. One of the victims has a GSW to the right leg. Three walking gunshot wound victims. I copy that. We need more units over there. A mass shooting in Sacramento left six people dead, including three men and three women. It just wasn't my son that got killed. There was five other people's children that got killed. Pamela Harris says her 38-year-old son, Sergio, is one of the victims. It's a hurtful feeling to know that you've seen your child that one day and then they're gone the next day. Police say surveillance cameras captured part of the shooting. They say it's a complicated crime scene spread across at least two city blocks. We know that a large fight took place just prior to the shootings, and we have confirmed that there are multiple shooters. In a statement overnight, President Biden demanded more action on guns, saying Congress urgently needs to ban ghost guns, require background checks for all sales, ban assault weapons and high-capacity magazines, and repeal gun manufacturers' immunity from liability. Golden State Warriors coach Steve Kerr also reacting to the shooting, calling out politicians in California and Washington. If our government had any guts, if people put others in front of their own career paths, you know, in front of their own re-election campaigns, in front of their own propaganda to uh, manipulate people, it's right there in front of us. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Police say they found a stolen gun at the scene, but they have not released any description of possible suspects. Look for the latest developments on this story coming up on Good Morning America, beginning at 7. And three men have been charged in the murder of a Houston area sheriff's deputy who was killed outside a grocery store. 51-year-old Harris County Sheriff's Deputy Darren Alamendares was off duty when he was shot and killed on Thursday after he tried to stop three men from stealing his truck's catalytic converter. 23-year-old Joshua Stewart, 19-year-old Frederius Clark, and 17-year-old Frederick Tardy are in custody. All three suspects will be in court today where they are facing capital murder charges. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has asked prosecutors to pursue the death penalty in this case. And a procession will be held for Deputy Alaman Dallas later this morning. A new flight route coming to San Antonio. It's a direct flight from here to Oklahoma City, operated by Southwest Airlines. The San Antonio Aviation Department made the announcement yesterday. The aircraft with 143 seats will operate every day except Sundays, at least six times a week. Currently, Southwest has nonstop flights to 37 destinations from San Antonio International Airport. For a list of those or more information on the new route, Head to ksat.com. And time now, 507 and 66 degrees for now. So to come, Apple will soon declare several MacBook models obsolete. Details ahead in your morning consumer news. Plus, prayers for Ukraine after the break, how people are coping with the crisis there. Outside with live cam, waiting on a potential shower or storm. What about the big parade tonight? How will the weather cooperate or not? We'll talk to Mike coming up. Welcome back. It is 511 across Ukraine and the world. The faithful gathered this Sunday to pray for peace. ABC's Terry Moran spoke to worshipers in one church in Lviv where one third of the congregation had been forced from their homes by the fighting. Sunday morning at the Central Evangelical Church in Lviv. Inside, the choir is singing. Listen. It's amazing grace. In the pulpit, the pastor preaches about the love of God. And upstairs, there's Bible study. It's all so familiar, kids running around after the service, grown-ups chatting. But this is Ukraine. One third of this congregation are refugees. But what were you praying for here today? 
Oh, every day I am praying uh, to God to save my husband because uh, he is a volunteer and um, it is very dangerous now. Angelina and her husband Valera are from Kharkiv in eastern Ukraine. When the Russians attacked, she took their two children to Germany to be with relatives and she's come back for just two days to be with Valera on his weekend leave. Irina Cherniak is a nurse from Kyiv. And may I ask what, what, what did you pray for today? Irina cannot answer. Her prayers are beyond words, perhaps. Then she tells us, I was praying for peace in Ukraine and to return home. Alexander Zykin is a web programmer from Irpin. Fierce fighting there drove him and his wife and their six children to flee. Alexander had a different answer when I asked what he prayed for. Uh, Russia to be destroyed. <laughs> you prayed for Russia to be destroyed? Yeah, yeah. It, it cannot continue to exist in, in this form as it is now. That was ABC's Terry Moran reporting. And time now is 513 and 66 degrees for now. Angry Birds making a comeback. That's next in your morning Tech Bites. Ever wonder what everyone's doing on their phones? They're banking with Bank of America. The groom's parents, they just found out they can redeem rewards for a second honeymoon. Romance is in the air. Like these two. He's realizing he's in love and that his dating app just went up. Must be fate. And Phil, he forgot a gift, so he's sending the happy couple some money. Digital tools so impressive, you just can't stop banking. What would you like the power to do? Age before beauty? Why not both? Visibly diminished wrinkled skin in just two days. Crepe Corrector Lotion, only from Gold Bond. Champion your skin. With so many fresh flavors delivered to your door, you won't be able to choose a favorite. Well, maybe you will. In today's Tech Bites, Apple is reportedly poised to declare several MacBooks obsolete. According to online tech reports, the 2014 models of the 11-inch MacBook Air, the 13-inch MacBook Air, and the 13-inch MacBook Pro will all be put out to pasture this month. The company will no longer carry their replacement parts. Next, Snapchat is making it easier to share YouTube videos. Instead of attaching a video as a link, now you can hit the share button on a video, select Snapchat, and the video will appear in your camera as its own sticker. And it's back to the future for Angry Birds. The original 2012 game is back on the App Store. Video maker Rovio had removed some older games due to design and technology issues, but the birds returned thanks to fan outcry. The new old version cost 99 cents. Those are your Tech Bites. It's now 517. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. At last check, the roads look okay. They've looked great this morning. No issues to report for anyone that's waking up early and has to head out the door, but let's get a look around town and see how your morning commute is shaping up. 35 at 37. Light traffic this morning. 16 to 4 at Babcock. Now, if you were with us earlier, you did see some flashing lights out there. Those were some textile crews working to improve the roadways, and in fact, that will be continuing for the rest of the week. Uh, as we get that wide look at the map, though, we're not seeing any issues, but as I mentioned, that road work has just wrapped, but drivers that have to head out in the overnight commuters, particularly in this area. Keep in mind that's from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning, 1604 westbound at Kyle Seal Parkway. Again, that will take place all the way up until April 8th. So just make sure you plan ahead. And for our friends up in Candle County, we do have some road work also that's happening. I forgot to include that slide in there, but just keep in mind the westbound entrance ramp onto I-10 will be closed as they work to continue the I-10 Kendall extension project. So again, we'll have that information on our traffic page. And in fact, if you need to head out the door and want to plan your commute, you can scan this QR code that we're going to pop up now. Now, this is really interesting because anybody that wants to know the traffic or closures that are in their area can scan that QR code that's on your screen now that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page for any traffic related stories. So again, stay with KSAT as we continue to bring you the very latest on your commute. There it is again. Voila. <laughs> it is cool. Have you used it? Not yet. I was about to do it on my. <laughs> when <laughs> we it was will on the run screen. it again. You, yeah. you almost caught both of us doing this. 
Yeah, well, listen, it's, it, yes. With the, with the getting older, are you out yes. there? I was going to say, are you taking a picture or are you trying to read it? <laughs> uh, both. What's the difference? <laughs> yes. Well, that's like when somebody hands me their phone to look at a picture, uh -huh. and, I, and I go, to, don't, don't grab the phone. I said, like, I've got to hold it. Yeah, here same. To see it, so. Me too. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, the hold in front of your face, I'm like, I know, and then I can't, my there? eyes can't focus on uh, that. Yeah. All right. Uh, I thought this was uh, first glance blue bonnet. It's lavender, obviously. Lavender is in bloom, and the bees love it too. Ooh, very pretty and love the smell as well. Thank you very much for that one, Yvonne. And uh, keep those KSAC Connect pictures coming on in here. Cloudy skies, whole different story than what we had over the weekend, of course. I ran into a little bit of mist this morning. I mean, very, very fine mist, so the roads could be damp. There is a chance for a sprinkle or two to pop up uh, throughout the rest of the morning. Temperatures are going to stay pretty steady in the mid and upper 60s, low 70s. And again, don't. this is not going to be raining the whole time. It's just that very small chance for a uh, stray shower or two later on today. 30% uh, may actually be kind of generous as far as rain chances. I think most of it is going to be further on up to the north, and we're going to make it up to 82 later on this afternoon with a couple of showers, uh, a thunderstorm here or there. But again, the odds of rain are not that great at all. As a matter of fact, again, this computer model throughout the rest of the morning, you know, one or two little showers here or there are possible. Same thing going into the early afternoon hours as well as late afternoon, one or two showers. It's not very bullish as far as rain chances at all. Same thing going Going into this evening and as far as the start of the parade later on tonight, maybe a couple of showers here or there. The majority of the rain is going to be further up to the north. Odds are in your favor again for the parade, but take an umbrella just to be on the, the safe side. And then going into this evening again, one or two of those showers scattered about here or there. The majority of the rain, though, is going to be coming in here in the overnight hours and then early, early tomorrow morning with a few of those scattered showers around and maybe even a thunderstorm. And then things are going to be clearing out very nicely and behind that. Now, there is also the chance that if a storm does pop up, it could become strong to severe, although the, anything severe would be just in the isolated just one or two here or there covers most of the area, at least that small risk does. But again, most of that is going to be further on up to the north as far as the threat for any sort of uh, severe storms later on today. As far as the humidity, very high this morning. It's going to stay high throughout a good chunk of the day tomorrow. Then it's going to start to drop off late in the day. That's going to allow temperatures to skyrocket. Drier heats up a lot more easily than moisture does. And then look at these dew point temperatures in April down in the low teens by Friday morning, which is very, very rare. And what that means is we're going to be seeing low temperatures in the 40s Friday morning. You might actually need a light little jacket on Friday morning, starting off with the parade starting at 9 o'clock. And then temperatures come back up over the weekend. Low temperatures do. And this is where more humidity is going to be coming back on in here. Tomorrow, with that dry air in place, we're going to see temperatures skyrocket up into the mid-90s. And then somewhat of a front moves through here. That's going to knock things down. We're at normal on Friday for highs. 78 degrees and then comes back up and we start to heat up again then going into uh, next week. So overall, other than today, great looking rest of the week for uh, Fiesta. 76 degrees, a shower is possible. Again, 30% chance of rain or even less than that. It is going to be breezy to windy today. And then later on this afternoon, a high temperature up to 82. A couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm. Again, odds are not that great. And then over the next couple of days, better rain chances actually, I think, overnight tonight. And perhaps a couple of leftover showers early tomorrow morning. We are going to be very warm, clear out. Humidity drops somewhat in the afternoon, 94, then knock 10 degrees off of that, 84 by Wednesday, 78 Friday afternoon, 49 starting off Friday morning. Very nice. And also for the Flambeau Parade on Saturday, it looks spectacular. King wow. William Fair on Saturday. Yeah. Beautiful. So, so just get through tonight, and it yeah. uh, looks like we're done with any risky scheduling and weather. Right. And NIOSA on Tuesday, Wednesday, ah, Thursday. That's right. Okay. That's tomorrow. Yep. Just Thanks. today is kind of mm. uh, a little okay. flying away. Yep. Yeah. 523, about 67 degrees. And after the break, it took longer than usual this year to reach music's biggest night. But after a COVID delay and the move from L.A. to Vegas, artists were finally able to rock the stage at this year's Grammy Awards. Welcome, everybody, to the 64th Annual Grammy Awards. We made it, people! Trevor Noah returned as host for an often emotional Grammys. 
as traditional pop vocal album winner Lady Gaga serenaded her ailing musical partner, Tony Bennett. I love you, Tony. We miss you. The show honored behind-the-scenes workers and stage crews who helped get artists back on the road after the lockdown. Because after two years of canceled shows and postponed tours, nobody deserves the spotlight more than the people who actually put up that spotlight. And John Legend performed with Ukrainian artists after a fervent appeal from Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. On our land, we are fighting Russia, which brings horrible silence with its bombs, the dead silence. Feel the silence with your music. Feel it today to tell our story. Chris Stapleton was among the performers who answered that call. He took home trophies for best country album, song, and solo performance. Olivia Rodrigo is a 19-year-old triple Grammy winner. No collecting best pop solo performance, best pop vocal album, and best new artist. Silk Sonic went four for four, including record and song of the year for Leave the Door Open. We call that a clean sweep. That's four for four. But the night's biggest winner was John Batiste, who won five Grammys, including the night's final prize, Album of the Year, and marveled at the power of music. It's like a song or an album is made, and it almost has a, a radar to find the person when they need it the most. In Hollywood, I'm David Dan. 528, about 67 degrees. And we have a lot heading your way in our next half hour, including new details about a new strain of COVID-19. What you need to know. One house, two fires in recent weeks. Neighbors and firefighters say they have their suspicions. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam, 66 degrees, a little humid, and expecting some rain. Welcome back, and good morning. If you're just now tuning in, 5.30 on your Monday, April 4th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, 531, good time to get some coffee, I think. Absolutely. Before you head out the door, you need a forecast and a traffic update. We begin with Mike Osterhage. Very humid this morning. A whole lot different than what we had over the weekend. Weekend was just sensational out there. And as far as rain, uh, don't expect the rain, but there is the chance for it. So odds are, are very low as far as rain is concerned. We do have some, I ran into a little bit of mist this morning. I mean, it was very, very fine. Didn't even have to use the wipers, but just don't be surprised if there is a, some mist out there. There's nothing showing up on radar right now as far as any uh, sprinkly showers. 66 degrees, that number, the dew point is at to 63. It gets above 60, you start to feel it. So yes, definitely feel the humidity out there thanks to uh, southeasterly wind pumping in all that moisture. Satellite and radar picture, there's all the uh, clouds that have moved on in here. And again, nothing is showing up on radar as of right now. Oak is high. I don't know about you, been seeing all that uh, nice little dust all over the car and everything. Mold, hackberry and grass are all on the low side. And as far as Fiesta forecast today, we're going to keep a lot of clouds around here. A couple of showers, a thunderstorm is possible today. Odds are rain chances are about 30% or less than that. So it's not going to be take an umbrella. Just be on the safe side if you're heading off to the parade later on tonight. But the chances of seeing rain are not that great. Temperatures going to make it up into the low 80s. And then we're going to be in the 70s throughout parade time. And with all that humidity, probably don't need a jacket. And then rain chances will continue to kind of uh, just be very, very low in the overnight hours as well. Great looking rest of the week. We're going to start off really or after today, we're going to be really, really hot for the rest of the week. And then it's going to be just beautiful. As a matter of fact, we'll probably be on the cool side by parade time Friday morning. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything going on? Not a whole lot right now, Mike. And for anyone that has to head out the door in the next few moments, they're in luck. You're basically going to have the roads to yourself this morning. Right now, US 90 at 36 looks pretty empty. We're seeing some light traffic also at 1604 at Gulebra, but keep in mind there has been some road work throughout the morning and there will be more road work taking place a little bit later on. But for now, anyone that has to head out the door, 
no congestion, no slowdowns just yet. We get that wide view of the metro area and it does not show any red. But again, just as a quick reminder over here on the northwest side, there will be some road work that will continue all the way up until April 4th. So for our early morning or overnight commuters, keep in mind again, that's from nine in the evening to five in the morning. Those westbound lanes at 1604 near Kyle Seal Parkway will be impacted, but nothing impacting those travel times right now, especially if you're traveling in from any of these communities. Still pretty green from Seguin on I-10 and those westbound lanes right now 30 minutes and 22 minutes if you're traveling in from 87 in Lavernia in those northbound lanes and 28 minutes coming up from Floresville. So no problems there, but the roads are quiet right now. We'll continue to watch the roads and give you those updates throughout the morning. Just remember to do the same stuff. Thank you, Stephen. For the second time in a little more than a week, San Antonio firefighters have been called for a fire at the same address. It is an abandoned house on the west side in the 4000 block of West Travis Street. And Katrina Weber is live at the scene. Katrina, it looks like fire crews have left. However, you say they have some ideas about how this started. Well, that's right, Stephanie. They did pack up about a half hour ago or so. Uh, they tell me that based on what they have seen and what neighbors have told them, it appears that there were homeless people in and out of this house. Now, they were here just a little more than a week ago, as you mentioned, for a fire at this structure. You can see what happened this morning. Uh, this is destroyed as far as uh, firefighters are concerned. Uh, they say that there were no working utilities in here. In fact, this house was boarded up after the last fire, but uh, someone did get those boards down off the windows and the doors and get back inside and then start the fire which broke out about three o'clock this morning i believe we have some video as well to show you uh there were flames coming through the roof when the fire crews arrived they managed to knock down the fire from the outside they say because there was so much damage from the last fire they didn't want to go inside and risk being hurt so they fought this strictly from the outside they knocked down the fire luckily kept it from spreading because there are some neighbors homes that are very close so no injuries, no other damage other than this abandoned home. And they say they will move to try to get the city to tear this down as soon as possible because it is a danger. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. And barricades continue along the St. Mary's Strip. And the goal is to keep bar crowds from parking uh, on those streets and trashing residential areas. Also to conduct a parking study to try to find a more permanent solution. John Paul Barajas gives us a look at how those who live there and those who hang out there think of that trial run. The St. Mary Strip is known to be loud, rowdy, and a place for nightlife. The problem is that bar crowd is carrying the downside of nightlife to residential streets. Parking, trash, vomit, using the restroom, and fights. Run it out! Run it out! Where by day families are playing, and at night they want to relax in their homes. I mean, you don't want your children being playing in the yard because there's all this urine on the yard. If you lived on the street from all this area, it's kind of what you bought into, and maybe if you've been here for a long time, I'm sorry, it's changed. These issues between bar goers and residents is why SAPD put up barricades on over a dozen streets off the strip as part of a parking study. The street closures are from Thursday through Sunday, 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. And if you don't want to park in front of your house, I understand that, but where do you want us to park at? Although bar goers aren't happy with the changes, this is a trial run. But how has it fared in its first three nights? They were moving, and, uh, and, uh, or they, they, were, they, they didn't move them, they went around them. Oh, we've seen a lot quieter streets, you know, a lot, it's been a lot calmer. Um, yeah, I think we've seen improvement there, but, you know, it pushed out further into the neighborhood. Tobin Hills Community Association President Parker Dixon explained something needs to change. He just won't know what that is until after the study is complete, but adds he is in no way in favor of shutting down the strip and neither are its patrons. I think the strip's only going to grow bigger and it's going to get better. So I hope the city does see this as like a staple. And that was John Paul Barajas reporting. The Tobin Hills Community Association president says he doesn't want to request any other changes until the study is complete. As for if the barricades will stay, he says that's up to the San Antonio Police Department. You can read more about this story on our website at KSET.com. The Bernie community mourning the loss of a pastor who died in a car crash in Louisiana on Friday. 50 year old Warren Beamer, the pastor at Healing Place Church. Church officials confirming the news. Friday, Beamer was heading east on I-10 in West Baton Rouge Parish when he came on some traffic, came up upon some traffic, stopped on the highway. 
Police say his vehicle did not come to a complete stop and crashed into the back of a tractor trailer. The church is planning a memorial service for him. And now to the coronavirus. In some states, cases are now going up. Health experts say that's because of the highly contagious Omicron subvariant BA2. Those changing trends come as the CDC is lifting a public health order from the start of the pandemic related to migration at the southern border. CNN's Amy Kiley reports. Surges in COVID-19 cases and asylum requests might soon hit the U.S. at the same time. The CDC is lifting a Trump administration order. It stopped most migrant crossings at the southern border, including those for asylum, since March 2020. Immigrant advocates argue Title 42 is about politics, but the stated reason for it is COVID-19. The CDC says it's lifting the measure May 23rd. It says prevention and mitigation strategies and public health conditions are better now. Por eso me que que... Refugees like this mother plan to cross the border as soon as they can. Officials expect as many as 18,000 migrant encounters at the southern border daily in the short term. The goal for everyone should be to make sure those asylum claims, those claims of people fleeing persecution, uh, are heard in a prompt way. Those who deserve protection from persecution get that protection. Those who don't are promptly sent back. Add to that the 100,000 Ukrainian refugees President Joe Biden promised asylum. The easiest way to get to the U.S. right now is not an easy way at all. Uh, it requires flying to Mexico um, and then eventually to Tijuana on the border, um, putting your name on a list and waiting. They're seeking to enter a country where average daily COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations and deaths have been going down nationwide. But experts say the highly contagious Omicron subvariant BA2 might be reversing those trends. Cases continue to fall in 21 states. They're plateauing in these areas and going up in more than a dozen states plus Puerto Rico. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. 540, about 66 degrees. And important news for parents this morning after the break, what you need to know if your kids play sports and what you should do if they get a concussion. Outside with live cam, if you're headed out the door in the next 20 minutes or so, Mike says, yes, grab an umbrella just in case for what could happen today weather-wise. He'll have a complete forecast coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. back 543 we hear of people having a traumatic brain injury what what does that really mean it's something that can have wide-ranging physical and physiological effects dr caitlin mooney sports medicine specialist at ut health san antonio joined leading at the essay this weekend to discuss what local families and parents should know as many as 3.8 million concussions happen each and every year and almost half concussions go undetected and untreated. Concussions are common and they can happen simply during sports. Now, Dr. Mooney is working to help local parents navigate concussion protocol and she explains what parents should know. Sure, so especially if you uh, know that your child hit your head, but even without, if they're complaining of headache, uh, they are acting a little odd, that could be confusion or they're just not acting like themselves. We also talked about symptoms to look out for and when to go to the doctor, when to seek medical attention. You can check out the full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us next Sunday, 8 a.m. for our next Leading Essay segment. Guys, back to you. And time now, 544 and 66 degrees for now. Just ahead, which movie opened the weekend box office and top things out? Jujutsu Kaisen Zero made the top five for a third straight weekend, taking in $2 million. Uncharted stayed at number four, grossing $3.6 million for a domestic total of $139 million. The Batman is up to $349 million domestic after a third place weekend worth $10.8 million. Loretta Sage is missing. I'm gonna rescue her. After one weekend on top, The Lost City fell to second, earning $14.8 million for a 10-day domestic total of 50 Five million. Morbius easily topped the chart in its debut weekend. The comic book flick about the living vampire opened with $39.1 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
And check this out, a massive tulip festival in Washington State is underway. It kicked off this past Friday. The festival is an annual event in the Northwest, but was one of the first to close when the pandemic began two years ago. Growers have staggered their planting, so the fields of brightly colored tulips will be popping all month long. That's just beautiful. The red pandas and snow leopards at Dublin Zoo are being treated to a new habitat. Ireland's deputy prime minister unveiled the zoo's Himalayan Hills enclosure after a long delay caused by the pandemic. Visitors will be able to see the red pandas and the snow leopards in an area that closely resembles their natural habitat. Nice. And Run Run, an ending fox rescued last year from illegal trade, is settling into his new home. Run Run was raised as a dog from when he was a baby, which meant releasing him back into the wild was not an option. Now at a captive breeding center in Peru, he is in an enclosure with rescued female fox. Let's check on traffic at 549. Things are fine still, <laughs> so nothing too big to report just yet, but the morning is still young. 37 at Jones Avenue doesn't really show you a lot other than just a lot of pavement out there. US 90 at 36 again, traffic light in a lot of these shots from Transguide, and we see a lot of pavement and we see a lot of green here in the metro area. No slowdowns to report or congestion that's building up in any of the lanes. So drivers, if you have to head out in the next few minutes, again, you're in luck. This is a good way to start the week, but let's take a drive up over here to Bernie. Uh, obviously, right now things are looking fine this morning. We're not seeing any slowdowns there just yet, but keep in mind we talked about this earlier. There will be a significant closure that there uh, that will last about three weeks. This will start at 9 a.m. Now drivers keep in mind the westbound entrance ramp from Bandera Road getting onto I-10 is going to be closed again. That will be for three weeks and should wrap up around May, but make sure that you're planning ahead right now. Text dot list that detour down the eastbound frontage road to get back onto I-10. And so we do have this information actually posted on our website. Let's go ahead and bring up that QR code one more time. So if you are just waking up, you can scan that QR code that will take you to the KSAT traffic page for all the latest closures and of course those traffic stories. But again, it's a quiet morning back here out on the road, so we're going to keep a close eye on things, but a good way to start the work week, guys. Very good. And something we hadn't seen in a while behind you, Mike, a windmill. A windmill. Yeah. And at first glance, I thought, oh, it's a wind No, it's just a garden decoration. It's still a windmill, yes. obviously, but. <laughs> Very nice picture. But if you move the camera, that's going to look totally different. So Why not? Perspective, right? Yeah, exactly. So, but thank you very much. And it's named as well, Wendy the Wind Will. But a uh, beautiful <laughs> shot. And this is what we had over the weekend. Obviously, lots of clear skies, lots of sunshine. Absolutely fantastic this weekend for the entire start of Fiesta going back to uh, last Thursday. Now we've got clouds and we've got plenty of humidity. I saw a little bit of, I mean, just fine, fine mist on my windshield this morning, but Nothing is being reported out there. 63 degrees is the dew point temperature, which means there's enough humidity to where you feel it and uh, all around the area. And these dew points are going to be staying on the higher side throughout the rest of today. So, yes, it is going to be somewhat of a somewhat of a sultry day and then going into this evening as well as tomorrow. And this is actually going into overnight hours and early tomorrow and all this moisture around here. And this is going to be the better time to see some showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms here and there. As in the overnight hours. Also, with all the moisture continuing to stream on in here, we might see a few of those little sprinkly showers trying to pop up as we go through the morning and then even this afternoon. Now, the humidity is going to be dropping down late tomorrow afternoon, and that's going to allow temperatures. We'll get this wind coming in here out of the uh, southwest. That's going to allow temperatures to just skyrocket tomorrow. Then we get somewhat of a front moving on through. The 30% chance for some rain around here is, again, for a couple light little, as we call them, streamer showers trying to come in here from the coast just because of that moisture continuing to be pumped on in here. Temperatures will stay steady in the uh, mid and upper 60s throughout the rest of the morning. And again, a stray shower or two is possible. Not very likely at all. Mid 70s by noon and then we're going to be topping off in the low 80s later on today. A couple of showers, a, uh, a thunderstorm or two is going to be possible today. Not very likely though. As a matter of fact, this computer model even through this morning, you know, has a couple of spots of rain here or there. Not really great chances at all. That's going to be the situation in through the afternoon hours. One or two of them 
here or there. And then even going into this evening, again, a couple of showers scattered about here or there. Most of the rain is going to be further up there to the north, and that'll be the situation in the evening hours. Then, like I said, in the overnight hours, probably the better chance for a couple of showers and for the commute tomorrow morning, then that's going to move on out and we will be clearing out by the afternoon. Now, if a storm does pop up, there's a very small risk as well that it could become uh, strong to severe with some high winds and uh, ice, some, some very small hail. But again, the majority of that is going to be further up there to the north later on today. But there is just that chance for it. Heading off to the parade tonight. Thank God's are in your favor that you're not going to be seeing any rain, but just be on the lookout. 76 degrees, a couple of showers. It's going to be breezy as well. And then a high temperature today up to 82. So we'll still be on the, the warm side of things. Uh, a couple of showers, a storm here or there. Not very likely, though. The majority of rain well up to the north. And then probably a better shot of rain is going to be overnight and early tomorrow morning. Clear out. Drop, humidity drops somewhat 94. Then we get a front, which is going to knock temperatures back down into the 80s. And then we'll finally make it back down to a normal high temperature by Friday, starting off in the upper 40s, about 10 degrees below normal starting off Friday morning. So kind of cool for the uh, Battle of Flowers parade for the start. Yeah, and there are Flambeau. a couple of mornings there, Mike, where we're going to be double checking the calendar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially and I'm okay with it. <laughs> and we keep talking about how, yeah, Fiesta is early this year, but still 49 degrees in the, you know, first week of April. We were talking about what we're going to wear to host Battle of Flowers <laughs> Friday, and she's like, I'm actually thinking about bringing a sweater yes. now. Yes, I need a festive sweater. Festive sweater yeah. for early. To start off, yes. 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 Yeah, because we will be back down there before sunrise, right? We will. Yeah, okay. 554, about 66 degrees. Speaking of Fiesta. We are excited about our case at Fiesta Metal as well, and you can find out where and when to get them later in the newscast. Good morning. We're so glad you're with us. Coming up, the latest on the war in Ukraine and the reports of alleged atrocities sparking worldwide outrage as Russian forces pull back from around the capital. Ukraine's president accusing Russia of genocide. This morning, how the U.S. might respond. Also this morning, more air travel chaos. After more than 12,000 flight delays and cancellations left thousands of passengers stranded over the weekend, what Southwest is saying this morning as other major airlines suffer big delays. That's coming up right here on GMA. Good to see Mr. Champion there. Well, ahead in our next hour at GMSA, the Spurs are getting hot at the right time. They complete the season sweep of the Portland Trailblazers last night and move another step closer to the playoffs. We'll have more on that. And a scary scene for one woman after a vehicle rolled over several times. We'll have the latest on her condition. You're watching GMSA. Ahead in the shower, the latest on an overnight fire at a home just west of downtown San Antonio will tell you if anyone was hurt. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. Ukraine again accusing Russia of war crimes after new atrocious images emerge from war-torn cities. How the U.S. is responding, coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, you will not need a jacket. I don't think so. It's a little humid, and we're starting at 67 degrees. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. Hope you had an awesome weekend. It is Monday, April 4th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the weather worked out, I think, for Fiesta, and I think it will continue for, for the most part as well. We're crossing our fingers. Uh, mainly, we need to get through today, Mike Ozraid yeah. says, because there is a chance at a shower or storm. Right. Very small chance for mm -hmm. some rain. Uh, we don't have anything on radar right now. I saw some mist on my windshield this morning. And if you are heading off to the parade tonight, I think the odds are in your favor. You won't see rain, but there is that outside chance. Then after that, yeah, really, really nice. Other than tomorrow's just skyrocketing temperatures. More on that in a second. Lots of clouds starting off this morning. And uh, yeah, as Steph mentioned, you probably don't need a jacket. Everybody's in the uh, 60s and even low 70s around here and a ton of humidity. Oaks on the high side. You may have started to see all the uh, dust and everything around here. That good old yellow oak dust. Mold, hackberry, and grass are low. Now, if anything does happen to pop up as far as a thunderstorm later on today, there's also a very 
small chance that it could become strong and or severe. There is a just isolated chance for one or two of those in our area. The better chance is further up to the north, and that's where the majority of the rain is going to be. But like I said, there's just that very small risk that one or two of those storms, if indeed they do pop up, could become severe. Now, as far as the forecast for the rest of today, 65 degrees, a shower or two is possible. Just these little streamer showers going to be possible throughout the day. 74 at uh, late this morning, 76 at noon, and then we will continue to get up into the low 80s later on today. Again, plenty of humidity. Don't let that graphic really scare you all that much, just to indicate the chance for a couple of showers around here. Winds out of the south east at about 10 to 20 miles per hour, so it will definitely be on the, the breezy side. And again, more specifically for the parade tonight, temperatures are going to be staying in the about the uh, upper 70s throughout most of the parade. The small chance for a shower or a thunderstorm. Very small chance. Again, odds are in your favor. You won't get any rain tonight, but I'd take an umbrella just to be on the uh, the safe side. The rest of the Fiesta forecast is coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big going on, sir? I wouldn't say this is big, Mike, but I would definitely want drivers to be alert because we're entering that 6 a.m. hour with some issues out here off 90. Let's get a closer look over here. Transguide, our friends got us a shot from some uh, where we can see some flashing lights out there, and you can see based on what we're looking at, traffic is starting to pick up in both directions of US 90. That crash has been reported in the westbound lanes right there at Zazamora Street. Uh, not sure why the label's not popping up there, but make sure that you watch for those first responders who are out there working to keep the road safe because it's unclear how this is going to impact traffic. Again, eastbound lanes that's traveling into San Antonio right there at Zazamora. That could impact that drive time. We do have a stall right now. It's also been reported off 410 South and at Culebra Road. Been there for a little while, but hasn't caused any issues. And we are not seeing any big delays if uh, you are traveling from any of these neighboring communities. So that's some good news. 31 minutes if you're coming in from Seguin to downtown San Antonio in those westbound lanes and 22 on 87 in Lavernia and 28 minutes traveling in from Flotusville. We'll take a look at those inbound times if you're traveling in from Castorville, but again, something to be on the lookout for 90 at Zazamoto. That crash has been picked up in the eastbound lanes. We'll have more updates coming up a little bit later on right here on GMSA guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, cleanup underway following an overnight fire just west of downtown. It happened around 3.30 this morning at a house on West Travis Street, not far from West Commerce. Crews say the home was fully engulfed when they arrived on scene. The house was abandoned and no one was hurt. It's still unclear what sparked that fire. New this morning, a scary scene for one woman after her vehicle rolled off the highway. It happened around 115 this morning at Southwest Loop 410 near Highway 151. Now, crews say they had to cut the roof and doors of the woman's vehicle to get her out. She was taken to the hospital with serious injuries, and at this time, it's not clear what led to that crash. Some other top stories we're following this morning. Three men have been charged in the murder of a Houston area sheriff's deputy who was killed outside a grocery store. 51 year old Harris County Deputy Sheriff Dar Darren Almendadas was off duty when he was shot and killed on Thursday after he tried to stop three men from stealing his truck's catalytic converter. 23 year old Joshua Stewart, 19 year old Fredarius Clark, and 17 year old Frederick Tardy are all in custody. All three will be in court today where they're facing capital murder charges. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has asked prosecutors to pursue the death penalty in this case. A procession will be held for Deputy Amandatis later this morning. Ukraine is accusing Russian forces of committing war crimes after leaving behind a scene from a horror film on the outskirts of Kyiv. Western leaders are condemning the atrocities seen there, calling for tougher sanctions against Moscow. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. Good morning. Some civilians in Bucha say they were just walking down the street when Russian troops tried to gun them down. We want to warn you, some of the images you're about to see may be disturbing. Devastation across Ukraine as authorities accuse Russia of committing war crimes. In Bucha, a city northwest of the capital, Kyiv, bodies lying in the streets, some victims with their hands bound and others shot at close range. Bucha's mayor saying hundreds are buried in a mass grave. 
in the south, explosions in Ukraine's main port city of Odessa after Russian missiles hit an oil refinery and several fuel depots. Ukrainian President Zelensky calling the killings a genocide. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken saying the Russian forces have committed war crimes and that the U.S. is working to document them. This is the reality of what's going on every single day as long as Russia's brutality against Ukraine continues. Sunday night, Zelensky appealing directly to all Americans at the Grammy Awards. Tell the truth about the war on your social networks, on TV, support us in any way you can, any but not silence. As negotiations continue between the two countries, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken says the U.S. and its allies are open to lifting sanctions against Russia if it means a peace deal. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. In your morning consumer headlines, there's new hope that gas prices may start to come down a bit after oil prices started to fall in the last few days. Now futures for the U.S. benchmark West Texas Intermediate down to around 98.50 a barrel. Bad weather in Florida making for travel headaches across the country. Thousands of flights had to be canceled or delayed over the weekend. Southwest Airlines taking the biggest hit. It was forced to cancel around 600 flights on Saturday alone. And the clock is ticking for all the tax procrastinators. The filing deadline this year falling on April 18th. The IRS says so far it has received about half of the returns it expects to get. However, that still leaves about 79 million taxpayers who have yet to file. The average refund so far this year topping $3,200. According to reports, Apple is poised to declare several MacBooks obsolete. Those reports say the 2014 models of the 11-inch MacBook Air, the 13-inch MacBook Air, and the 13-inch MacBook Pro will all be put out to pasture this month. The company will no longer carry replacement parts. Snapchat making it easier to share YouTube videos. Instead of attaching a video as a link, now you can hit the share button on a video, select Snapchat, and the video will appear in your camera as its own sticker. And it's back to the future for Angry Birds. The original 2012 game is back in the App Store. Video game maker Rovio had removed some older games due to design and technology issues, but the birds returned thanks to fan outcry. The new old version costs 99 cents. I like that game. Time now, 6.09 and 67 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSH, you missed the Grammys last night. We've got highlights right after the break. We are looking forward to our KSAT Fiesta Medal for 2022, and you can get one too. Just uh, stick around, listen to us here on GMSA. We'll tell you when and where you can pick one up. That'll You'll find that out before 7 o'clock this morning and uh, before we wrap up the end of the newscast. So let's go outside with live cam and grab that umbrella and plan ahead for possible showers or storms today. Mike talks about that and then a drop in morning temperatures again later this week. He has details coming up, and we'll also check traffic with Steven. 613, the Grammys were delayed a few months due to COVID, but finally took place last night in Las Vegas. And there were quite a few surprises. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the highlights. It was an opening befitting Las Vegas. Blow the dice for me. Silk Sonic bringing the Sin City vibes as they kicked off the 64th Grammy Awards. Host Trevor Noah wasting no time addressing that other award show. We're going to be dancing, we're going to be singing, we're going to be keeping people's names out of our mouths, and we're going to be giving out awards. But then it was all about the music. Little Nas X bringing the hits. Call me by your name. Dua Lipa and Megan Thee Stallion getting a wardrobe assist from none other than Donatella Versace. Now, Lisa Regers. As they presented the award for Best New Artist. Olivia Rodrigo! The Good For You singer taking home three awards. Be cool about what I was telling you. Billie Eilish taking the stage wearing a shirt featuring Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins, who passed away in March. Hawkins won a posthumous Grammy as the Foo Fighters took home the award for Best Rock Song. Please welcome Lady Gaga. And Lady Gaga bringing the audience to tears with her emotional tribute to Tony Bennett. 
And in one of the most moving moments in Grammy history, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky addressing the audience. Bruno Mars and Anderson Pat grooving their way to the stage to accept the award for record of the year. We are really trying our hardest to remain humble at this point. But it was John Baptiste taking home the biggest award of the night, album of the year. I love you if I, even if I don't know you. Good night. Hey. Many of the performers were introduced by people who work on their touring crew as a way to highlight people who've helped bring back live music after COVID. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. Quarter past the hour. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Things are moving and good for you. Get the Olivia Rodrigo reference. Traffic is moving without any problems right now on these shots of trans guides. So right now, nothing to report just yet in terms of what we're seeing out there. We did have a crash right there off US 90 eastbound at Zazamora. It does look like that has cleared. So our friends over at trans guide are showing us a lot of empty roads out in that direction, but something new just popped up. We're going to take a drive over here to 410 northbound at WW White. I uh, checked the trans guide cameras. I'm not seeing a crash out there. However, that is what TechSot is reporting. So we're going to keep that on our map and make sure that we watch it closely, but always make sure you do the same thing. And of course, make sure you plan ahead. There will be some road work happening today in Kendall County. Keep in mind, this will be a three week closure. What you can expect out there is a closure of the westbound entrance ramp from Bandera Road getting onto I-10. Again, drivers, keep in mind that does start later this morning at nine and will last for three weeks. Detour down to the eastbound frontage road. And for the latest on those traffic stories and closures. Let's go ahead and bring up that QR code once more. You can scan that QR code. It will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that has a list of the current closures as well as traffic stories and updates. So again, there it is for your use, guys. Thank you, Stephen. It works. It does. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're really happy right that now. we can test it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it did. Yeah. Yes. So I'm uh, glad we can utilize that. Let's Thank roll you. that school bus, Mike Coaster Hage. <laughs> all righty. You don't need to uh, don't need to warm up the bus this morning. As a matter of fact, uh, gonna need the air conditioning all day long. We've got some humidity out there. Temperatures in the mid 60s. Humid. Um, ran into a little mist this morning. I mean, very very fine mist. And then throughout the rest of the afternoon, 82 for a high temperature. Now a couple of showers, a thunderstorm. The odds of rain are not that great at all, and it is going to be on the, the breezy side. But just uh, just don't be surprised if one or two of those showers or a storm does pop up. Take a look at this picture. This is absolutely gorgeous out there. Mr. McClellan, of course, over by Woodlawn Lake. And how beautiful. Yeah, just folks sitting around there. You can't really see them in the foreground. They're right behind the, uh, the caption. But... Just enjoying chilling out, incredible evening, comfortable temperatures. And that's what we're going to be experiencing after really tomorrow for the rest of Fiesta. Really comfortable temperatures. Matter of fact, a uh, light jacket. I don't, never used that phrase before with Fiesta, but that's going to be uh, the call later on in the week. Lots of clouds starting off this morning. And as far as the rest of the morning, a couple little sprinkly showers are possible. Not very likely. Again, there's nothing showing up on radar as of right now, but just as this humidity continues to get pumped in here from the south to southeast, one or two of these little streamer showers, as we call them, may continue to pop up. We'll be in the mid 70s then at noon. Again, a slight chance for a sprinkly shower or two. And then later on this afternoon, again, one or two showers, even a thunderstorm uh, thrown in there. 82 for a high temperature later on today. Here's a computer model. This is the, the rapid update model. And this one, I think, does a really good job of showing what will or will not be happening today. One or two of those, you know, scattered little showers here and there around the area, even going into this afternoon, late this afternoon, and right around dinner time same thing just one or two of them around the area this one has us uh, saying somewhat a little bit of a break in the clouds by later on this evening. Did you notice though during the evening hours didn't really have anything as far as any rain now in the wee hours tomorrow morning we'll have a few more showers around here and then those are going to continue to uh, to clear on out throughout the course of the day. So rain chances are not that great nor is the chance for anything severe. However, there is the risk for an isolated uh, severe storm or two if anything does pop up but we got a pretty good lid on the atmosphere which is going to try to suppress that most anything that that would be potentially severe is going to be well further up to the north. So the forecast today, 76 degrees, a shower is possible at noon, breezy, and then later on this afternoon, high temperature up to 82. A couple of showers scattered about here and there, at least the chance of it, about a 30% chance of rain or less than that. One or two of those storms. If you are heading off to the uh, river parade tonight, odds are in your favor that we won't see any rain, but 
maybe an umbrella light rain jacket just to be on the safe side tomorrow. Some uh, some rain early in the morning and then we clear on out. Humidity drops down somewhat in the afternoon. That's going to allow temperatures to skyrocket mid 90s. Big, big blast. That's I mean, what we're used to for uh, for Fiesta, mm -hmm. then 80s, mid to lower 80s, upper 70s for the rest of the week going into the weekend. Beautiful for Battle of Flowers as well as Flambeau. Outstanding. Yep. Mm -hmm. What a treat. Yep. Just download the app. You know, best way. Check mm -hmm. out the radar later on today. See if anything's trying to pop up and yeah, we'll be there. We'll take some credit. Uh, thank you cards. Gratuity coming your way. Yes. I'll take the gratuity. Okay, I knew you would. 620, <laughs> about 67 degrees. We'll do both. The Spurs are in the driver's seat to make the postseason play in bracket, and they're starting to get hot at the right time. Coming up a little later on GMSA, we're going to have a recap from their game with the Blazers. There's a different way to treat HIV. It's every other month injectable Cabinuva. For adults who are undetectable, Cabinuva is the only complete HIV treatment you can get every other month. Cabinuva helps keep me undetectable. It's two injections given by my healthcare provider every other month. It's one less thing to think about while traveling. HIV pills aren't on my mind. A quick change in my plans is no big deal. Don't receive Cabinuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabinuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabinuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. If you switch to Cabinuva, attend all treatment appointments. Every other month, and I'm good to go. Ask your doctor about every other month Cabinuva. And welcome back at 623. Tiger Woods has revealed he is practicing to play the Masters, which is scheduled to begin on Thursday. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, will he or won't he? Welcome back, Big Cat! It's been a little over a year since Tiger Woods' potentially career-ending car accident, but now signs that he could be readying for a comeback. He, we've seen him come back from so many different things over the years, but this would be remarkable if he could handle this. The tough thing is going to be, can he physically get around this golf course walking? I am so proud to present my dad, Tiger Woods, into the World Golf Hall of Fame. Recently, his 14-year-old daughter, Sam Woods, inducting him into the Hall of Fame. You've defied the odds every time. Being the first black and Asian golfer to win a major, being able to win your fifth Masters after multiple back surgeries, and being able to walk just a few months after your crash. And we'll have much more on this potential comeback coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 625, 67 degrees. And more, much more to come in our next half hour of GMSA, including the very latest on that shooting. At a concert in Dallas, at least one person is dead and several more hurt. We're going to have an update. And on a completely different note, a lighter note, our Fiesta Metal giveaways continue, and we've got another one coming up in the next 30 minutes. We'll tell you where you can pick up your medals while supplies last. We'll be back. Of course, we've got this. Forgot about that. Yeah, a quick check of the roads out there with Trans Guy before we go to break. There was a look at Highway 90 and now looking at Loop 1604 at Bandera Road. We'll be right back. Ahead this hour, cases of coronavirus have been on a steady decline in the U.S. over the past several weeks. Now, health experts are warning about a new subvariant. We're going to hear what they're saying. The big news today is uh, what will the weather be like tonight for Texas Cavaliers River Parade? as we go into the first full week of Fiesta. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Right now, low clouds, and we're waiting for that sun to come up. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday the 4th. Happy Monday and happy Fiesta again. We're celebrating all this week. Lots going on around town today. Back to work, back to school. And of course, we've got to work in a little Fiesta fun, right, Mike? Yes, indeed. And uh, I mean, the start of Fiesta has just been sensational as far as weather is concerned. Starting uh, last Thursday night, all day Friday, over the weekend. Now this morning, a uh, whole different story. we got a lot of humidity out there, lots of clouds. There's no rain uh, being detected on radar. I saw just 
specks of mist this morning. That's about it. 67 degrees. We are about eight to nine degrees above normal. And then that number dew points at 64, which means there's some humidity out there. And that southeasterly wind continues to pump in all of that humidity. As far as the river parade tonight, when it kicks off, we're going to be at 80 degrees and then drop uh, just in the upper 70s. Lots of humidity, so probably don't need a jacket. Take an umbrella just to be on the safe side. Uh, one or two showers out there, maybe a thunderstorm. The odds of rain are very, very low. Odds are in your favor. You won't see any rain tonight, but just in case. And if anything does happen to pop up as far as a thunderstorm, there's a very small chance the, the atmosphere is kind of unstable to where it could be strong to potentially severe. But again, most of those are going to be further up there to the north. So we just had the an isolated uh, severe storm potential in around the area later on this afternoon. The temperatures right now, everybody is in the 60s and 60s and low 70s. Oak is high, starting to see all that uh, yellow dust all over everything. Low amounts of everything else showing up. So cloudy, humid, a little bit of mist, and then just a couple little sprinkly showers even this morning moving on in here just as the moisture continues to pump in from the Gulf of Mexico. A couple of thunderstorms possible this afternoon, and then same thing tonight. Very mild, a stray shower or storm overnight probably have a better chance for some rain well after the parade's over. And then tomorrow, after some morning rain, it's going to be hot in the afternoon. We're going to clear out. Humidity is going to drop off, get somewhat of front moving on through here. And we've got a beautiful after tomorrow rest of Fiesta. Pleasant mornings, nice afternoons. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Last uh, half hour, you said not too big, but uh, going yeah, on. we did have some issues in the last half hour. And in the matter of those minutes, though, Mike, things have cleared out. And right now, Transguide, we're seeing a lot of empty roads and traffic lightly picking up, though, in some of these areas. 281 there at 410, you can see the flyover ramp. We're seeing a little bit more activity there. Also at 410 at Fredericksburg. But there were some issues, as Mike mentioned, that have thankfully cleared out. We did have this crash. A 410 northbound at WW White. Didn't see it on the Transguide cameras, but we posted it on there because it was reported by TxDOT. So we don't see any issues out there. And thankfully, it looks like you're in the clear if you have to drive in that direction. And the wide look at the map at 632 pretty much shows we are in great shape as we are seeing more people get their day started and get out on the roadways. And if you are traveling into San Antonio, the good news is you're in luck as well. Right now, pretty much green across the board, but as usual, 281 southbound traveling in from Bolverde. We're looking at a 29 minute drive time if you are coming into San Antonio. So just make sure that you plan ahead before you head out the door. We're going to continue to watch these roads closely, but as always, make sure that you do the same guys. Thank you, Stephen. We begin with a story about the one that almost got away. San Antonio police say a group of men tried to steal an ATM from a north side bank, but it seems things didn't quite go as planned. Trina Weber's live at the corner of Thousand Oaks and Jones Maltzberger with that story. We understand police have someone in custody, Katrina. That's right, they're calling that person some, a person of interest in connection with the theft of an ATM. This is uh, Jones Maltzberger right at Thousand Oaks. You can see police are keeping an eye uh, on, this, on this bank. This is where the ATM was until about a little before 4 o'clock this morning. They say that someone did manage to actually get the machine and drag it out of here, uh, which is unusual compared to a lot of the cases that we've covered in the past where they are unsuccessful. But in this case, they did uh, tie a chain around the ATM, we understand, and then drag it on, on the back of a truck, just drag it right along the street. They made it uh, about maybe about a quarter mile down the road to a 99 cents and more store. And that's where they abandoned the truck, they abandoned the machine, but police did not abandon the search because they did end up taking someone into custody. Again, someone who they're calling a person of interest. We understand though that they are still looking for others who were part of the group that did steal the ATM from this bank this morning. But again, it doesn't seem like they got anything out of it because police found the truck, they found the ATM, all of that just down the road. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, two women are in the hospital after a crash on the city's south side. It happened a little before one this morning near Southeast Military Drive and South WWY. Now, police say the woman driving a vehicle lost control and rolled several times off the road. The driver was able to get out of the vehicle by herself. The passenger had to be cut free. Both women were taken to the hospital. Some other top stories this morning. The Bernie community mourning the loss of a pastor who died late last week in a crash over in Louisiana. 50-year-old, 2-year-old Warren Beamer was the pastor at Healing Place Church. 
Church officials confirmed the news. Friday, Beamer was heading east on I-10 in West Baton Rouge Parish when he came up on some stopped traffic on the highway. Police say his vehicle did not come to a stop and crashed right into the back of a tractor trailer. The church is planning to host a memorial service for him. We are learning more information about the deadly shooting up in Dallas. One person is dead and at least 11 others, including some in critical condition. Now the shooting happened at an Easter themed trail ride and concert with as many as 2000 people in attendance. Dallas police say a fight broke out and one person fired a gun into the air, followed by someone else firing into the crowd. Now one of those shots hit a 26 year old man in the head. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The other victims were taken to the hospital, including three juveniles. In Northern California, Sacramento police looking for at least two people who fired into a crowd Sunday, killing six and wounding 12. Police found a stolen handgun at the scene, but they don't know if it was used in the shooting. Officers there urging everyone uh, to sh uh, share videos and other evidence that might lead investigators to the killers. An update now to the coronavirus. Cases are actually up in some states, and health experts say that's because of the highly contagious Omicron subvariant BA2. CNN's Amy Kiley reports. Surges in COVID-19 cases and asylum requests might soon hit the U.S. at the same time. The CDC is lifting a Trump administration order. It stopped most migrant crossings at the southern border, including those for asylum, since March 2020. Immigrant advocates argue Title 42 is about politics, but the stated reason for it is COVID-19. The CDC says it's lifting the measure May 23rd. It says prevention and mitigation strategies and public health conditions are better now. Por eso me que like Refugees like this mother plan to cross the border as soon as they can. Officials expect as many as 18,000 migrant encounters at the southern border daily in the short term. The goal for everyone should be to make sure those asylum claims, those claims of people fleeing persecution, uh, are heard in a prompt way. Those who deserve protection from persecution get that protection. Those who don't are promptly sent back. Add to that the 100,000 Ukrainian refugees President Joe Biden promised asylum. The easiest way to get to the U.S. right now is not an easy way at all. Uh, it requires flying to Mexico um, and then eventually to Tijuana on the border, um, putting your name on a list and waiting. They're seeking to enter a country where average daily COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations and deaths have been going down nationwide. But experts say the highly contagious Omicron subvariant BA2 might be reversing those trends. Cases continue to fall in 21 states. They're plateauing in these areas and going up in more than a dozen states plus Puerto Rico. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. 637. We hear of people having traumatic brain injuries, but what does that really mean? It's something that can have wide ranging physical and even psychological effects. Dr. Caitlin Mooney, sports medicine specialist at UT Health San Antonio, joined Leading SA this past weekend to discuss what local families and parents should all know. As many as 3.8 million concussions happen each and every year, and almost half concussions go undetected and untreated. Concussions are common and they can happen simply during sports. Now, Dr. Mooney is working to help local parents navigate concussion protocol and she explains what parents should know. Sure, so especially if you uh, know that your child hit your head, but even without, if they're complaining of headache, uh, they are acting a little odd. That could be confusion or they're just not acting like themselves. We also talked about symptoms to look out for and when to go to the doctor, when to seek medical attention. You can check out the full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us next Sunday, 8 a.m. for our next Leading Essay segment. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Max. 638, 67 degrees. And after the break, we're talking about all things Fiesta, including a preview of tonight's Texas Cavaliers River Parade. That's right. But coming up after the break, we'll tell you where and when you can get your hands on one of those KSAT Fiesta medals today. Six forty-two each year, hundreds of thousands of people line the banks of the San Antonio River to view the most unusual parade in America. We're talking about the Texas Cavaliers River Parade. It helps the Cavalier Charitable Foundation raise money for children's charities. It's happening tonight from seven to nine thirty along the world famous San Antonio River Walk, and you can watch it live right here on KSAT twelve and of course on KSAT.com.
And it's time to reveal the location of this morning's Fiesta medal giveaway. All right, heads up, folks. Starting at 8 o'clock this morning, you can get a medal over the HEB at 1, I'm sorry, 10,718 Petranco Road. That's just inside Loop 1604 on Petranco. And a reminder that medals will be given away on a first come, first serve basis while supplies last. 10,718 Petranco. Good luck out there. Okay, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos to see how the roads are looking. You may have noticed those flashing lights out of the corner of, of your eye there, stuff. Uh, I-10 at Crossroads not looking good right now because a crash was reported uh, in that direction or an incident, I should say, right now. Texas has that labeled as a stall, but you can see that traffic is building and we do have a few first responders that are out there. Uh, we are working to find out what this incident is as of this moment, but you can see that traffic is seeing a little bit of a slowdown, actually slightly improving. Uh, earlier, there was a little bit of yellow and red that was building in those eastbound lanes of I-10 right there at Crossroads, not causing issues as we can see on our map. But what we saw in that trans guide camera, obviously more folks are getting their morning started, so you have to drive carefully. Make sure to move over or slow down. We also have a stall 18 wheeler here off US 90 eastbound at Couples Road. So these directions that we're showing you that's coming into the downtown San Antonio area, those eastbound lanes are where we're seeing some of the problems. So make sure that you drive carefully, especially when you head out the door. Uh, of course, when you see those situations, make sure again, move over or slow down. That is the law, guys. Thank you, Stephen. I like that. Love this picture. Yeah. Love that. It's got a little bit of everything, doesn't it, Mike? Yeah, the, the little uh, waxing crescent moon there in the background and just the the angle that's taken with the bridge right there. Yeah. Yep. Always, and, and also the advice. Did you read that? Yes. Always no. a good idea to take a siesta during Fiesta. Very good. Or just during whatever day it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What a great picture. Thank you very much for that. Uh, lots of clouds, lots of humidity. Not the prettiest picture this morning. Maybe some mist out there and all the wind coming in here out of the southeast will continue to pump in the humidity. And as it does, we may see what we call just little little streamer showers just because of all that humidity pumping on in here. And it's going to be staying pretty humid. This is kind of typical, if you will, Fiesta weather today with the humidity and warm temperatures. Although, you know, not like like what we've had when it's in the latter part of April. It's going to stay humid tomorrow morning, and then we are going to get a dry line or drier air coming on in here. Wind's going to shift around to the southwest, and that's going really going to help temperatures spike with that. Dry air warms up much easier than moist air does, and that's going to put temperatures. They're going to be skyrocketing up into the 90s, and then we'll have somewhat of a front trying to move on through here. It's just going to knock temperatures down for the latter portion of the week. Uh, got you know, don't be put off by the, the graphic there with the rain on it. Just one or two sprinkles out there. That's to account for that 20% chance of rain at best. <laughs> Temperatures are going to make it up into the mid 70s at noon, 76 degrees. Again, a stray shower or two is going to be possible today, but not very likely. And then going into later on this afternoon, uh, 82 for a high temperature. Again, a stray shower or two is going to be possible, but getting computer models. And I think this is the, the takeaway from this is odds of rain are not that great. And if you are going Going to the uh, parade tonight, it's in your favor that it won't rain. Not much is showing up on this computer model. One or two scattered showers out there going into the evening hours and later on. And again, most anything that does pop up is going to be further up to the north. Then in the overnight hours, we're going to start to see better chances for some rain into the wee hours of tomorrow morning. Now on the downside, though, anything that does happen to pop up, there is a very slight chance that it could become strong to potentially severe with high winds and hail. But again, those would be few and far between majority of that further on up there to the north. So forecast today, it is going to be warm and humid, 76 degrees today at noon, and then we're going to be topping off in the low 80s. Plenty of humidity out there, a stray shower or two, even a thunderstorm or two, but not very likely. Then tomorrow, We'll have some rain to start off in the morning, in the overnight hours, early tomorrow morning, and then that humidity drops. We jump up to 94 degrees. It's going to be smoking hot tomorrow. <laughs> Front moves on through here, 84 on Wednesday, and we'll continue to drop down, starting off at 49 degrees Friday, 78 for a high temperature. You heard that right for Battle mm -hmm. of Flowers, and then Flambeau is going to be beautiful on Saturday, and we'll start to see a little humid trying to come back in Saturday evening, but just great weather. I mean, the only kind of flying the ointments today. Yes, and a little hot for the start of Nyosa. Yeah, yeah. That's right. and uh, for the start of Nyosa tomorrow. But tomorrow's almost going to be like oyster bake for everyone.
yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be hot. All right, thank you, Mike. 647 right now. Silver Black went into last night's game hoping to sweep the season series against the Trailblazers. Uh, but without DeJounte Murray and Yaka Pirtle, Spurs and Blazers traded leads throughout the first half. Keldon Johnson already having a big night, scored 17 points before the half. Later in game, Spurs would take off in the fourth, and they never looked back. Great game. Final from the AT&T Center. San Antonio wins 113-92 with the win. Spurs get the season sweep against the Trail Blazers and build a little more distance between them and the Lakers for the Western Conference play-in bracket. Next up for the Silver and Black, they take on the Denver Nuggets on the road. Hopefully the Spurs can keep this momentum going as the regular season comes to a close. Spurs Nuggets set for 8 o'clock tomorrow night up in Denver. Good luck, guys. Yep. And go Spurs go. Go Spurs go. Time now, 648 and 67 degrees for now. With gas prices at an all-time high, home projects are getting more and more expensive. Tomorrow on GMSA, tips to navigate your plans. And taking off here at live cam there at 67 degrees uh, not too bad this morning you will not need a jacket for the start of your monday introducing your 2022 fiesta royalty powered by silverado and your local san antonio area chevy dealers hi my name is calista burns and i'm miss fiesta san antonio viva fiesta this year's Miss Fiesta is a native to San Antonio who grew up on the southeast side of the city. I went to Incarnate Word High School all four years and I am now attending the University of the Incarnate Word. I'm an education major with a double minor in math and reading. One thing that's important to her is mentoring young girls to enter the STEM programs. My community service project as Miss Fiesta is called GEMS, which stands for Girls in Engineering, Math, and Science. And we are a summer program that promotes and empowers girls to be involved in the fields of STEM. She's proud and excited to represent the Fiesta Commission because Fiesta, well, it isn't just a party. It's a party with a purpose. I love that Fiesta is a party with a purpose because, yes, we do go out and celebrate and have fun, but behind all that is a great big purpose of getting our community involved and working together. And her favorite fiesta event. The Battle of Flowers Parade because it just gathers the entire community. It's so festive and so bright. Good morning, we're so glad you're with us. Coming up, the latest on the war in Ukraine and the reports of alleged atrocities sparking worldwide outrage as Russian forces pull back from around the capital. Ukraine's president accusing Russia of genocide. This morning, how the U.S. might respond. Also this morning, more air travel chaos. After more than 12,000 flight delays and cancellations left thousands of passengers stranded over the weekend, what Southwest is saying this morning as other major airlines suffer big delays. That's coming up right here on GMA. This one ATM thieves zero. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber from the north side of town. This is where police say a group of thieves tried to steal an ATM from this bank here at Jones Maltzberger in Thousand Oaks. They were successful in getting the machine out of here, but they didn't get very far with it. The police found them all the way down the road, about a quarter mile down the road. That is where they dragged the machine, according to police, with a chain and a truck. It was just tied to the back of the truck, and they were dragging this machine along the street. Police got the call a little bit before four o'clock this morning. They did manage to take one person into custody who they are calling a person of interest in this case. However, they tell us that they are still looking for some other people who were tied to this. Now, it does not appear that they got into the machine at all. They simply dragged it off its pedestal and then took it down the road where they abandoned the truck and the ATM, as well as the chain that they used to tie it to the truck. Uh, again, police still looking for some people connected to this case. Reporting from the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And don't forget, you have another chance to get your hands on the KSET Fiesta medals this morning. Medals will be given out at the HEB on 10,718 Petrenko Road. That's inside Loop 1604, so it's a first come, first serve basis, and medals will be given away while those supplies last.
five till seven. Let's go to Stephen for an update on the commute. US 90 at couples that sold 18 wheelers still out there, so you got to watch out and make sure that you move over or slow down. But we still have this incident working off I 10 eastbound at Crossroads Boulevard. And again, that stall off those US 90 eastbound lanes there at couples. It is humid this morning and watch out maybe for a little bit of mist or even a sprinkly shower too. 68 degrees right now and we're going to make it up to 82 later on. A shower or a thunderstorm or two is possible and one or two of those there is the chance could become strong to potentially severe. But again, uh, the odds of rain are not that great. So if you're going to the parade tonight, I think the chances are in your favor. It's going to be rain free. Keep that last graphic in mind tonight, folks. Okay, yeah, thank true. you, Mike. Thank you. You guys have a great day and we'll see you back here at nine.